Hello again. My name is Reverend Roy Scarborough. I bring you welcome from Clover Hill Presbyterian Church and Big Spring Presbyterian Churches. I have a message for us today, this Good Friday. I hope you have been able to find good things in this day and in all days. We're celebrating in the liturgical season this Friday before Easter that Christ was crucified, he died, and was buried. I've always been struck, perhaps you have as well, just to call that a good day that our Savior died, that he was crucified, that I even said celebrate sometimes sounds wrong. I use that word so often in liturgical thought, though, because we are to celebrate, to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And that is a challenge for most all of us in every day. It's a challenge worth taking, but it is a challenge. The idea to celebrate Good Friday, we have to change our mindset from just going through each day to looking and being led by the Spirit, being led by our gracious, loving, almighty, powerful, heavenly Father, Son, and Spirit into right relationship with God and with everything else. It's my challenge. That's what I'll be pushing us toward today. Let us open now with prayer. Please bow your heads with me. God of grace and glory, Lord of love, God who has us and holds us, God who goes before us and behind us, God who came to earth as a babe, who lived among us as Christ, who grew up, who went out and gathered disciples, gathered followers, who led them all the way to the cross and died for them and for us. Holy God, mighty God, we pray that our eyes will be opened, that we will see fully what you are doing, that we can come to celebrate every day, that we can know you and make you known and be disciples ourselves, that we can go with you, that we can love with you, that we can forgive and be forgiven, and that we can proclaim the good news in each and every day. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We rejoice in you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you have been reflecting on Scripture, reflecting on the events that happened in our little Monday, Thursday devotion from last night, that short little service. We read the words of when Christ sat with his disciples and they celebrated the Last Supper for Christ. They gave us communion. From that time, we read that Judas went out and he brought people to come and arrest Christ, that Christ went with his disciples into the garden and they prayed. He prayed with such intensity that he sweat blood. In that time of when that would have happened till 3 o'clock, that was the time that Scripture says that he passed. We read that at 3 o'clock in Matthew 46, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lehem sikabara. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with Hebrew, but it is translated, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard that, they said the man is calling for Elijah. At once they ran and got a sponge, filled it with some sour wine. They gave it to him to drink, but others said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
This reading from Matthew's Gospel again is from the 27th chapter, verses 46 down through 52. Thanks be to God for these words. Christ was crucified. He was nailed to a cross. He hung there till he breathed his last and died. And then rocks were split open. Tombs were open. That cloth that was between the Holy of Holies was split wide open. Those are realities of how we can talk about it being Good Friday when our Savior died, that that separation between God and man that's represented by that cloth in the temple being torn, that all could then see into the Holy of Holies. The tombs were opened, that the dead came back to life to speak of Christ, to speak of what God had done. not like every other day. It's a good Friday. It's a grand Friday. I don't know what you are thinking. I hope you again have been thinking about, been pushing yourself toward Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday, but we need to reflect on Good Friday. Reflect on this day that we were the ones whose sin required God to be sacrificed. To reflect that whether we intended to be sinful or not, we have been. I know we may not want to talk about it, but there are all times in our lives when we behave with bad intent. There are other times we do bad things without any thought of how we might do bad at all. But regardless, both of those types of sin... In all the other ways we might sin, are why Christ had to come and die on a cross. He lived his life, hopefully showing us that we can live differently, not just survive, not just be isolated and panicked and uncertain, but that we can rejoice in every day because we are forgiven. We can have new life because of what Christ did on this Good Friday so long ago. Let us rejoice in that. Let us think on that. Let us let his breathing his last set us free. Let us allow a time of confession that we acknowledge our need for a God and be freed. We'll start with having a moment of silence where you might reflect on your sin, then I'll have a prayer for us that will culminate that. But let us go into a time of silence. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those were the words of our Savior as he took our sins upon us. Holy Lord, we thank you that he was willing to be nailed to a cross so that we might be set free. We confess that there are things that we should have done that we have left undone. We confess that there are things that we should not have done that we have done. We confess that in our brokenness, in our pain and sorrow, that we have done all sorts of things that we are not proud of. That we have misread moments, that we have held back words that would have encouraged, and we have given words that have been a pain and a stabbing effect to ourselves and to others. Lord, we confess we need you as a Savior. We thank you for going to the cross for us to set each of us free. We pray, Holy Lord, that as we wait for Easter Sunday, 
that we can do so knowing that you continue to have us and to hold us. That as we read scripture, we will know that you are our God and we are your people and that you love us and have forgiven us. We pray, holy God, that in these days of isolation and being set apart, that we will discover anew how great is your love and forgiveness and that we can move into being able to rejoice in each and every day. Lord, may we fully understand and know the meaning of Good Friday, and may we give you all the glory and honor and praise. And as we go into Good Friday evening, through all of the time of Sabbath of Saturday, that we know you are resting and that we can rest secure in you, that we will rise up on Easter Sunday and every day and give you thanks and praise. We rejoice in your love, O oh Lord. We rejoice in your power and might. And we rejoice that in you it is finished. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Family of God. Know that you are loved. Know that God's grace is with you. And though we may be scattered, that Sunday is coming. Amen.